This episode of the podcast is sponsored by the Torah Suites newsletter. What do you get when you combine great humor with fascinating Torah insights, amazing stories, fascinating quotes, practical halacha, and thought-provoking musr? You get one of the fastest-growing Torah newsletters in the world, the Torah Suites Weekly, a smorgasbord of Torah content perfect for the Shabbos table and the whole family, and is absolutely free of charge. Just email torahsuites at gmail.com. That's T-O-R-A-H. S-W-E-E-T-S at gmail.com today to start receiving the Torah newsletter everyone is raving about. And I will put that information in the show's notes as well where you can check it out. To sponsor an episode on the podcast, which as I've said a number of times is $360, you can email me, nachi at svaramchatter.com or svaramchatter at gmail.com, whichever you prefer. Um, If you want to just support it, the podcast in any way, um, there is a link in the show's notes via PayPal and you can also Zelle, QuickPay, the podcast, Chatter at gmail.com. And thank you to all of those who have subscribed and rated the podcast, especially on Apple Podcast and on Spotify. And as I mentioned a number of times, it is available on 24-6. Uh, also available on Nucky Radio. I think you have to add it online, but I should mention that as well. As well as any other um, podcast platform, uh, which is their number of um wherever you listen. I know, uh, actually, I should just mention this here. Some listeners have complained that they listen on Podbean and it takes some time to load there. I'm not sure why that is. Um, on my end, it's uploaded. I don't know why it takes time, so I can look into that. But uh, sometimes it takes some time to hit Podbean. But uh, wherever, Google Podcast, etc., wherever you listen, if you can subscribe, rate if they have that option, review if you're able to, and uh, enjoy the episode. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of this Farm Chatter podcast. On this episode of the podcast, I'm going to be joined by Yehuda Ezrael, who recently published a Sefer Zikaron titled Pnei Moshe, Le'il Nishmas' father, Rav Moshe Yitzchak Ezrael, Zikaron Lebracha, and we'll be discussing the Sefer and the uh, some very interesting Torah and uh, letters and different various different things. There's actually an entire Parsha about, uh, you know, an episode meaning about the uh, get ep- controversy that happened in Atlanta almost 100 years ago. A lot of letters from manuscript that were never printed. Very fascinating. And we'll get into that a little bit later as well. So thank you, Yehuda, for joining me and actually joining me once again on the podcast. Yes, thank you for having me, Nafi. <clears throat> the first time was a little bit anonymous, but um, this, is, uh, this is when we're going public. Yeah, the first time was, uh, if listeners will remember, if you haven't checked it out, was uh, like, I think it was the one year anniversary of the podcast. And uh, we met in the J2 Pizza in Lakewood, and it was that day, and you're like, we should go, we should, you should do something, it's one year anniversary. So we just uh, hopped on a podcast together, you interviewed me, I think it was the only time, the time I was like interviewed. And no, it was the only one that hadn't been interviewed yet on the podcast, so that was the basic thinking. That's right, and you were anonymous at that point. So that old episode, it is you, Dan, as well. Um, okay, so, so let's... So, Let's start off. Tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and your background. Um, okay, so I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, which is uh, the subject of a lot of the Sefer. My family's been there for a very long time. And because I learned in Eretz Yisrael and Taras Moshe, Tomo, as some people know it. And I've been in Base Medrash Kavoa College for several years now. Um, and that is more or less my biography. Okay, now let's talk about the, this Sefer Zakar and, and your father. Um, I, you talk about, we can do kind of both together because yeah, they really I'll go together. Jump in. Okay, fine. So my family lived in Atlanta for a very long time. My father, Allah Shalom, was a, was a product of the community. My grandparents um, were early members of Beth Jacob, or Emanuel Feldman was Makar of them in the early 60s, I think. And, um, and my father and his brothers grew up in the community through the schools that were founded by Rebbe Feldman and other people involved in the community. Um, he went up to Yeshiva, learned in a place called BMT in Eretz Yisrael, I think now turned into Torah Traga. He learned Shalavim, and then he went to Neri Yisrael, where he spent a bunch of years, um, and uh, that was his primary place of learning. And from there, he moved on to, he was in New York for several years, he was in school. Um, he was close to many Tamid HaKham in New York at the time, specifically Rabbi Emanuel Gettinger was the, the Rav in Manhattan, Young Israel, the West Side. And eventually he got married and moved back to Atlanta and was involved in a family business that he managed. Um, and just as a, as an individual in the community, he's one of the only people in the community at that time, I guess in the early nineties, who was a, uh, a yeshiva educated, uh, Balabas. He wasn't paid to do Kirov or he wasn't a Chinuch and nothing, uh, no formal rabbinic training. Um, but in his role in the community, he was very involved in learning with people, giving shiurim. He was a shalmeshav in the kol for a while. And just a person whose entire life revolved around his learning. Um, he was fascinated by basically just about everything. I mean, he, he, um, 
a fascinated person could talk to anybody um, about anything and everything. Um, he was fascinated in, 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 in the mathematical sigils and Kedusha Chaydash and the dateline and in in uh, in, and Targumim and all sorts of sigils, um, Tamiya Mikra, very like niche things, also regular things. He's into Machshava, he's into Halacha. And um, his, his, his life was involved in, in, in his family and in, in the community institutions and in learning. You know, on a regular day, he would, uh, uh, I would say that routine is not so much part of uh, my family's blood, but um, my father would, you know, if during Dabbing he happened to open up a safer and got engaged in some sort of sugya, he might end up sitting there for an hour after Dabbing before going off to work and then coming back two hours later to check something up again. Um, routinely, he would fall asleep at night with the safer. Um, when Tamid HaChacham Rosh Hashiva's Mishalachim would come to town, my father used it as an opportunity to, to speak and learning with them. And uh, he was a person that really lived through his learning um, and everything. I mean, um, not just Torah, even secular books. And uh, he had a tremendous library. Um, people are always borrowing Svarim. I think some people still owe us some Svarim. If you're out there, you could send them back at some point. Um, and uh, tremendous thirst for learning. Um, he, was, he was an Adam Yashar involved in, in many of the, in the finances of a lot of institutions and in running and even starting some institutions. And um, yeah, so that's about my father. And I guess I'll move on now to how the Saver came into being. I want, I want to jump in though, that uh, our mutual friend, uh, Ravelli Maricone, uh, I obviously hear from him about your father, that your father was a big uh, purchaser of Svarim from him. And uh, you, you told me that you even have a lot of those receipts from him. I really, I, I, you know, I told you this. I'll say this on the podcast. I really think you should have printed it in the safe. I wouldn't want to see those receipts. Yeah. If someone in Atlanta was buying tens of hundreds of svarim, you know, he was a real, like you say, he had, he had a big library. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting. I found recently a file, like I was telling you, a file of all of his receipts. And not just receipts. He was always inquiring about new svarim. In Atlanta, you can't really get svarim. So he was always in contact with Ellie Merritt, some other people. Um, trying to find out what's new out there, what do they have on this Pesach, on this topic, and Elmer would send him lists and lists of Svarim. My father would say, okay, I'll take the first half of those or something. Or, um, and uh, anytime we went to, you know, what we call up north, Baltimore, uh, Lakewood, New York, my father would go to the Svarim store and just order like a box, fill up a box and have them ship it down. And um, yeah, so that's about the Svarim. Um, fine. So anyways, so it was about 10 years ago, my father was nifter very suddenly. And ever since then, my family's done different projects to commemorate his memory. Um, at the beginning, we, we would write English Day Torah. We'd send out an email every week. There was a weekly email list that went out. Um, eventually, we published like several English books of these Day Torah. Um, we'd bring in speakers from time to time on the art set usually. And um, different little things that we'd, we'd done as a family. And I had this dream at some point that I wanted to... I, I felt like we'd, we'd done a lot, but I thought we we didn't fully do justice to... to I don't know, justice is the word, but... We, and there was something more fitting that I wanted to do for my father that I thought that, that I thought would really uh, present who he was and be like a real, uh, like a matseva to who he was. And I, I thought that we could only do that if there was something that could be found in a base medrash, which, um, which would uh, be a zikar to my father. My father was a constant fixture in the coal base medrash in Atlanta, in the back table, close to the swarm. There's always a stack of swarm around him. And um, I wanted to put out a safer. So I wasn't sure how to go about that. And I'm still not sure how to go about that. But... Is obviously turns out to see how that went into this. So I, I called my brothers and I said, we could all put together some shtikoch. Um, let's, let's, you know, everyone's in yeshiva, like write up a chabura, maybe we could put together countries. And um, that's how it started. So, you know, I was convincing them to put stuff together. And then once I was putting things together, it's like, let's, let's see what else we can do. Um, so I don't remember exactly the sequence of how things developed, but um, I remember the, the, there was a coal in Atlanta a couple years ago. It's not open anymore, but they had put out a safer from their coal, and they put together. They put at the beginning a shtickle tire from the old rabbi in Atlanta, Tovi Geffen, who's famous as the Coca Cola rabbi. And I was like, well, if they could get something, so let me try to get something too. So it was in the back burner. I was going to try to find something from the Geffen, and I started looking out to other things. Um, I, I sent an email to my father's close chaver. A lot of them are in learning Rosh Hashanah. Some people are about them. And uh, just to pitch the idea, if anyone would put in a shtickle, we're going to put out a little contrast from my father's yard site. It's the 10th yard site this past summer. And um, I got some positive feedback. So a couple of people said they'll send stuff in. Um, people kept asking me, what's the topic of the safer? And I was kind of stuck because I was like, I'm not going to get 30 people, 20 people to write on one topic. Um, and then one of my father's friends, David Spetner, who's Rosh Kohl in Cincinnati, he called me up and he said, I can't write a shtickle for you, but I have Ha'ar's and Masechus Kalim on the Rav and Masechus Kalim. If you're willing to print that, then, then I could give that to you. So first I'm thinking, like, what am I going to do with Taurus and Masechus Kalim? 
And then it occurred to me that my father's fascination with Torah wasn't limited to one subject. It was kind of, it was very broad, like everything appealed to him. So if I wanted to really commemorate my father in a meaningful way, I wouldn't limit the Sefer to one specific topic because people would think that that's what he was into. You know, there was so much that, that he was all about. Um, people describe my father as an Isha Hashkolos. So I figured I could put out a Sefer Hashkolos, a Sefer Hashkolos, we could, we could include everything in it. So um, so I took his horse, and then from there, it um, it, it grew in, in, in Baruch Hashem. So um, should we talk about stuff in the Sefer? What's, what's, where should we go from here? Yeah, just to be clear, you say it grew. You know, your initial plan was to have a, a Kuntris, and now the Sefer is uh, 600 pages. So it, kind of, it really grew into a very large work with a lot of different things. I, I think, I mean, I think you kind of addressed this, but I think something that you, you told me you're asked a lot, and this is something that I would ask you is, like, what's the process of putting together? How do you get the material? Is, is that literally where you're just emailing a lot of your father's friends or other Rashi Yeshiva or Abanim? Was it looking in archives? How, how do you go, before you even talk about the actual Teichan, I think it's interesting. A Sefer Zikaran, which is like you're saying, it's almost like a journal. You're putting together lots of different random materials, so to speak, in a good way. So, like, what's the process for that? How does one go about finding? And again, like, we'll talk about here. You have things from kind of people today, Rabbanim today. You have things from, you know, Rabbanim of yesteryear. And you have, like, manuscripts. What's that process like? Yeah. So, um, it was a process that I was not familiar with before. And, uh, I, you know, I spoke to different people. I probably spoke to you. I spoke to Amir Cohen. I spoke to our friend Yassel Hausman. And everyone had a different piece of advice. Not everything coincided with what people were telling me, but I um, I decided first that it's not going to be, you know, people writing on different topics. So I'm going to have a, a, a Schmeitz section, regular sugyas and halacha. And then also I want to do Agatha. People want to write about Agatha. So I decided we'll have Agatha as well. Um, and that's all from contemporary people. So I reached out again to my father's friends. I reached out to different family members. Um, and I started broadening my search a little bit. Um, people that, I didn't know well, and maybe didn't know my father well, but people that I had shaykhs to, and I figured that I could get something out of. So um, I'm just trying to think where I, where I went from there. Um, the different Rosh Hashivas that I knew that had you know passed through Atlanta and stayed in our house, and Rabbi Olshin had a shaykhs, and uh, Rabbi Herschel Zolti from the Mir Yeshiva in Brooklyn, I knew had a shaykhs. Um, and different people my father hadn't been in touch with maybe in a couple of decades that had learned in Baltimore. Um, I was able to get stuff from them. And slowly the, the tour started developing. I remember I went to Ali Zayas because I, I, I'd seen Ali Zayas products and I'd spoken to Rich Spanish a couple times in the past. And uh, I liked the way they do things. So I told him I'm putting out a country to my father. So he said, okay, call me in six months when you have something to put together. So I, I left and I just started doing things by myself. I, I would send him stuff to edit and to type, but I didn't, um, you know, we, we weren't in touch so much and he wasn't so on top of it because there wasn't much to come of it. Um, my father's very close to Shraggy and in Baltimore. So I called him. He was busy putting out a safer. So I said, maybe you'll send us a simon from your safer. We're going to come out first and, and it'll be like a little preview. And uh, so he sent me something. As it turns out, his safer was published first, but Shine, it's in there. Um, and I, um, I, several were in so also were gracious to give stuff. While I was doing this, I, I was talking to a friend of mine, Eric Searle, and he said, he said, why don't you get stuff from Ruderman? And I said, sure, how? So he said, call this guy in, in Baltimore. He, he deals with all the Xavim and, and see if he gives you anything. So I, I made a cold call. I didn't know who he was. Um, I didn't expect to get anything. But he said, I have five, six letters. Khtam um, never published before. Most of the letters were written to his nephew, Reb Nacham Rabinovich, and Eretz He said, you're welcome to take them. He also has a letter from Ritzipi Zachfrank writing Ha'aris on, on the Avadis Halevi from Ruderman and Rav Ruderman's response. And I was like, I could just have it? He said, yeah, sure. So he sent me everything. And... Uh, I think maybe I sent it to Ali Zayas and, and I was like, let's, let's, let's start typing this up. And we started going through that. Um, there's a Rish Chabur in BMG, Shmuel Shayafi, I'm close to. And uh, I asked him if he would give me something from himself. But then he mentioned his grandfather, Lord David Kronglas, was Mashkiach in Israel. And he has a whole stack. One day he calls me up, he said, come to my house very quickly. He hands me a stack of letters um, from David Kronglas. David Kronglas, when he was in Shanghai, he put together a safer on Zerim. I think it's called Divrei David. And... He published it, I think it was several years later, but when he printed it, all this Chaverim, the Altamirs, and different Rashivas in America, all sent in Haaris. And the family never did anything with it. So he said, you're welcome to use whatever you want. So that's a, we have a fat section of Dovah Kronglas letters. Um, another interesting thing, oh, this was a random uh, Hashkacha. I was very close to this. And, and I want to jump in before you get to the next part. Then, you know, you just have to downplay those letters. You talk about Altamirs. There's a lot of really, you know, who's who that have letters together with there's a Baruch Sorotskin tells, from Mordechai Gifter, Rishmol Brudny, you know, Box, William and Salberger, there's a Raphael Greenblatt, Rishmael Shulman. We'll talk about there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of really interesting letters. And you say like, um, 
uh, fat section. It's about uh, 40 pages. So there yeah. is uh, there's a lot there. Yeah. 30, some, 40 pages. Yeah. And and like most of these letters, there's some good personal nuggets in there as well. So for people that aren't holding in the suggies, you could also skim through them. Um, another thing I was, uh, uh, at the time, I think about when I began working on the Sefer. So uh, there was a Yid, Tamal Chacham Malik, Rish Mayo Shulman, who was Nifter. I had a relationship with him. And I, I, I meant at one point I wanted to get something from him. I don't know if I could ask him because he already wasn't well. I was going to maybe ask his children if they had anything from him that I could print. Um, my father also ironically knew him. And um, as I was somehow, as I was thinking about this, I saw online um, our good friend Yaakov Jamal, the Jewish bookery, that has been revealed now. Um, he had posted that he he once bought a used copy of the Mesha Chachma, an old copy, I think it was the first print Mesha Chachma, and it had an RS, an anonymous RS on, on almost every page or frequent horrors throughout the Sefer. And he said he looked through them and, and it looks like a Tom Chacham wrote them. And later on, um, he discovered that this was the copy of Rishma Yoshulman. Um, that itself is a story because his name wasn't in the front. And um, he was trying to figure out whose uh, who Sefer is this. He saw on the back on the back cover, there was a stamp. Someone named Sidney Shulman from uh, some, some bank in Manhattan had a stamp in the back. But he figured that was just uh, some salesperson. So he, had, he showed it to... Um, another uh, podcast frequent with Moshe Maimon. And Moshe Maimon looked at the Sefer without seeing the stamp in the back. He says, this must be Shmaiyot Shulman's Sefer. And he said, oh, that's Sidney Shulman from the back of the Sefer. How do you know? And he said, it just, it just makes sense. So I called Moshe Maimon. It's like, how do you know this? He said, I don't know. Hashara, it seemed like it. But anyways, I reached out to Yaakov Jamal to see if, first I wanted to buy the Sefer. Uh, he didn't want to sell the Sefer, but he said you could come take a look at it. So I went to Brooklyn um, and I went through the Sefer and it occurred to me that we could do something with this. So I scanned the whole safer and uh, could be, I went back a couple of times to do that. And over the next couple of months, um, I went through the horrors. I, I transcribed as much of it as I could. Um, and then again, different people were able to uh, uh, decipher some of his writing. Um, and that actually, I sent it to Rabbi Shimano to Ali Zayas, who sent it to one of his people who added elaborate, extensive horrors on the bottom. Um, so that's another nice feature of the Sefer. By the way, once we're talking about Yaakov Jamal, who a friend and uh, a listener of the podcast, and I will you know, mention anyone that needs looking for antiques and looks for a dealer that they want to purchase things from, should reach out to him. Um, so I just want yes. to give, give him a shout out over here. And that's a very interesting um, thing over there. And you have you have other letters and other things from Rafael Shulman as well. So you have a, a yeah. bunch of stuff from him. Yeah, randomly a few things fell into my, uh, into my lap. Uh, my father, as I mentioned, he was close to this with Emmanuel Geninger on the West Side. So he has a son here in Lakewood, Rafael Geninger, or Shashiva here. So I called him also just to see if he had anything from his father. I thought it would be nice to have something from, from his father in the Sefer. So he gave me a nice correspondence of a Geninger with Ernest and Alpert um, about Zahir Siyaz was trying. As I was at his house and he's flipping through letters, so kind of a letter fell out of his stack. And he said, oh, you're not interested in this. This is a letter which my Shulman wrote to my grandfather, Rabbi Riff. And I said, I'm very interested in that. And he's like, okay, sure, whatever you want. So I put that in also. And, oh, there was also the, the Chrome Glass letter was in there also. Oh, and Rishmoy Shayafi from Lakewood also told me he had a correspondence with Rishmoy Shulman, so I put that in as well. Um, another thing, oh, sorry, uh, Rabbi Gelbert and Flappos was actually very, very uh, helpful with the Sefer. So he mentioned to me early on, before I knew that I was putting together the whole Sefer, I thought it was just a country. So he mentioned that he has letters from Rishmoy Fisher. He said, if you, if, if, if you think it's something that you'd be interested in, I could try to work out that you could put them in. So first, I can't believe it, but I brushed him off. I said, I don't think that's what I'm looking for. It's not, it's not my thing. No, it's a family safe. What, what shaykh is? But as I was picking up steam, I was like, no, I want those letters. I called him back. I said, is the offer still open? And he said, yeah, sure. So he gave me, I think it's five, six letters, fascinating letters. Um, yeah, again, you get how big a Tom Chacham is from the letters, but also uh, the obscure masculine topics. He, uh, he addresses a number of other things. If you want to... Yeah, we should mention some of those things because I think that would be a lot of a lot of interest to the to the listeners. Um, if you want to discuss some of those letters, there there are some random sugya, some random inyanim. But he talks about the Ramchal and the Chidosh Shaykhs of the Ramchal, which uh, you mentioned. Mentioned Rishi Maimon. Rishi Maimon has a piece in Yeshurun a long time ago about this, but he mentions you know uh, uh, the Ramchal Kuf Ramchal, where he talks about. Um, Rishi yeah. Tzvi goes in there. Yeah, and the uh, Chuvos Besam Rashi has a little thing about. Yes. Um, he mentioned, what, oh, he also has something about mitzvahs use of art. I know Shneir Burton got very excited about that. Another guest of the podcast. Um, different, uh, just flipping through the letters, there's a tremendous amount of, of ideas you could get from them. Um, right, which is, which is very interesting. Again, he talks about Egos Ramchal, he talks about, he says, 
but he says in the first edition that there was uh, many mistakes. By the way, there's a new edition of that. And Besamim Reich, he says, uh, he goes through it. You know, the famous uh, forgery, Ashol Berlin, um, that claimed he attributed it to the rush. And he talks about maybe there was things for Rishonim, not Rishonim in there. It, it, again, it's very interesting. Like you said, besides for that, he talks about Anair Kavod, and Mitzvah Yishavari Yisrael, Yastam HaOros, Son Masech Um But then, again, there's there's a lot in here, a lot of fascinating letters from Rishonim of Fisher, uh, the base Yishai. And they, I can't believe you, you weren't going to take them. Come on. Yeah, but uh, I, I realized as soon as I realized what I was doing, that it was a, it was a silly thing not to take it. But And, and I've gotten tremendous amount of feedback on those letters, so I'm, I'm glad that we did. Um, and then another, I, I reached out to uh, a Talmud of Rishmol Arbach also, who I knew had a whole collection of letters. And, uh, and by some grace of God, he was uh, he agreed to give them to me. Um, he even edited them himself. Um, they were a big mitzia. They ended up getting published in Yishurin also, but uh, the first showing was here. Um, but also some very beautiful letters and some important letters also there. Um, oh, there's another letter I want to point out, which is that um, we'll get to the Atlanta section in a few moments. But um, going through uh, the letters of... I guess I could say it here by Harry Epstein, who was a, uh, a Talmud of Sabbat, who ended up becoming a conservative rabbi in Atlanta, but I was going through his files in Atlanta, and there was a letter, a very rare letter in his collection um, from the altar of Sabbat, written to his father, praising um, his, his prized Talmud. Um, and besides for the, the letter, there's also, there's some tire in there as well, and there's not so many things in writing from the altar. So that's also printed in here. I thought that'd be an appropriate place to put it. Um, so, uh, and he, and he, he was related to Marsh Mordechai Epstein, right? The Rashivan. Uh, he was a nephew of Marsh Mordechai. Yeah, his see. father, Rashivan Epstein, was a, a brother. Marsh Mordechai was a Slavotki, was Chevron. He was a Slavot, yeah, 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 right, both. Yeah. And, then, and this was, he was also, Harrison was in, was in Chevron also. So, so, um, then, so that letter from uh, from the Alto Slavotki, that's, uh, this is the first time it's printed, never printed anywhere else. Yes, yeah, never printed anywhere else. Um, it's definitely a rare letter. Um, and then, oh, so also just, we'll get to the archives and stuff, but. Once you get into basically chaver to chaver isle, once you start working on one thing, then you know you get in touch with other people and people reach out. So I got a call from this fellow Shalom Jacobs, who who's who puts out. Uh, I don't know if he's on the podcast yet, maybe he will be. Hopefully, hopefully. Um, but he puts out with Sihir Skrzynski from Omaha stuff. So he reached out something that he had a question about getting into the archives. But once I had him, I said, "Do you have anything from Rabbi Skrzynski?" So he sent me a, a hadron later might. Uh, I think it's a nice trick of he, By the way, uh, Shalom Jacob, he has a lawyer with a, a massive uh, collection, I understand, and a major, uh, Bibliophile major expert. He actually prints a lot of interesting svarim. A lot of times, they, I think they were just done one time and never done again, and he reprints them. I think he also works with Ali Zayas, yeah. uh, with the Bishop and, and yeah, some of them are really interesting. But like you mentioned, the ones that are kind of are famous, with Yerush Grzynski was uh, related to Pchem He's a rabbi in Omaha, Nebraska, a hundred years ago, I'm not remembering what I meant exactly when, and he, there's some very interesting, he put out a safe for him and Yain Nesach, he has some Mayadam, and I think he's planning on putting out more from him, very interesting. Again, besides yeah. for the other stuff, so as you mentioned, there is uh, a Hadron for say the Mayad in here from him. Yeah, so so that, and then I have Rabbi, Rabbi Forschlager from Baltimore was a name for Old Nary Israel Tamidim and other people, they, they call him the, the guy of Baltimore, I think, Tamina uh, Abne Nazar, so uh, Rabbi Bergman, who puts out his farm, also gave me something, and um, yeah, some other Nary Israel stuff. Um, I want to jump back to the to the to the contemporary stuff just because I want to mention a few things in the Agatha section. Um, well, first of all, in the regular section, I managed to get some from Emmanuel Feldman, the old Reverend Atlantis of Langezunt, um, and his son of Elon Feldman. Okay, so in the Agatha section, also just a few things that I think are, are worth mentioning. So Menachem Lansky may not be so well known, although he definitely should be. Um, he's a Magachir Nairisrael, but that doesn't do justice to who he is. Um, Tremendous Talmud Chacham and he's a Machshava, maybe a Makobel. But so we have Shirim from him in Avodah uh, Hashem, beginning of Chelik Al Shulchan Aruch. Um, I'll be the Derech of the Gra, which is which is his one of his things. Um, so it, there's there's like very few things from print uh, from him in print at all um, in existence. So he was very gracious in letting this be printed. Um, then Rabbi Kohen from Flatbush gave something, and then Rabbi Sperka, who's written a number of Svarim, which I think also should be more well known than they are. Um, we have some of his drashas, and then a number of other things that are noteworthy as well for the Agatha the section. I, Rabbi Sperka, you, should, you know, he's a major expert on the Ramban, and he has yeah. a beautiful edition of Shara Gmul and others for him. Yeah, yeah. So he, uh, yeah, there was another, there was another good pickup. Um, and then you also you have a, you know a section of Torah from the family members that you oh, put out, and yeah. also I don't think we mentioned once we're talking about the family members. You know, it has to be a section from uh, from you and father family members, your father. You, you mentioned your father's biography, but you wrote a really nice, full kind of biography in front of the Sefer as well. Yeah. Okay, fine. So we'll talk about both of those. 
um, I think it was the also has the idea again to, I wasn't sure my father wasn't a public person, so I put a biography, should I not? He said, this is for him, of course he should. So I, I, I put together a biography. I also just used the opportunity just because once I was doing this, I, get, I did like some family background um, because I thought this was an appropriate place to do it. I'll just mention, I don't know how relevant this is to everybody listening, but one Mitzi, a friend of mine called me a couple of days ago and I said, he said, I think this is the biggest Mitzi you found, which is that my family came, the, the Ezra, originally Israelski family came from a town in Poland called Gunyans. Um, the only relevant factor besides for us um, is that the rub of the town was the Sheriff of Nassim Baft logo from, from Lakewood. But um, there's very little known that we know about our family from there. Um, but uh, a couple months ago, a year ago, I was going through one of these online archives. I saw online that there was, they digitized the entire Vada Yeshiva's records. And um, they had it organized by town, donors per town, who would give on, like, on a monthly basis, I think. And they would send it to the Rav, who would send it to Chaim Meiser, who distributed it to the Yeshivas. And I, I found uh, a little listing for Gunnings, which is this little town. And I just started looking down the list and I see five, six names down is my great, great grandfather, who we knew nothing about. We didn't know if he was a firm or anything. Um, and very gratifying to know that uh, who he was, I mean, not who he was, but that he was a donor to yeshivas and uh, supported my sister of Tyra. So I, I include that as well. Um, so that was nice for the family to see. I, I, I guess it wasn't only Jenny Miller, Dovey. <laughs> right, right. Jenny, there's others. Um, and... Um, yeah, so then, so, so we have, I have the biography of my father at the beginning, um, goes through just generally, oh, and I know you once mentioned, right, I talked about my grandfather and his bris, I, I remember you were once interested in that story, um, my grandfather was born in Atlanta. A, a really fascinating story, yes, and we should really speak that out on the podcast. For those interested in early American history and the dynamic in these communities, so my grandfather was named Avram at his bris. And there's a little scruffle because they realized that the other, meaning he was named after his father's father, they realized that the other grandfather was still alive and was also named Avram. So I guess they weren't not going to do the Hasid. Um, so they didn't know what to do. So Rabbi Geffen, who I think was the Sandik at the Bris, um, advised adding a second name, Avram Aryeh, um, which is what ended up happening, um, just due to that uh, omission of thought. Um, so that is, at the beginning, biography. Yeah, that's uh, and, uh, just gives a, a yeah a taste of flavor for my father was. I think it's what, well done. Yes, the husband actually helped uh, edit and and uh, work on that with me. I, I'll say that that story is very interesting, and and just reading it, that story jumped out at me. So there are interesting things there as well. You shouldn't downplay, you know, those of us that like history and uh, listening to this Farm Chatter podcast probably like history. It's interesting to hear about a family in Atlanta and you hear about these stories. I think that's an interesting thing to I'll read. mention one other thing just because once we were talking about it and you're saying that it's interesting. So my father was a girl's school that opened up 20 some odd years ago in Atlanta called Tamima High School. So there's a meeting, a founding parents meeting or founding community members meeting and uh, trying to come up with a name for the school. And, um, they, uh, is, uh, they decided to open up a Chumash. So they're flipping to the Chumash, trying to think of names. And someone said, let's look in this week's Parsha, Parsha's Vayikra. So my father looks up and he says, what about Nekeva Tamima? You know, I'll show the Karbonas that I mentioned in the, uh, in, in the Pusik. So I don't know if he said it in jest and in humor. I suspect he did. But either way, um, it stuck. And the name of the school today uh, is a credit to him. So uh, that's mentioned in there as well. The school's name is the Cave of Tamima or just Oh, Tamima? sorry, just Tamima. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not the Cave of Tamima, although, right, I didn't say that right. Just Tamima. Make your checks out to Tamima High School. Well, but that, but his joke was the Cave of Tamima. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. So we got the... they, 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 they kept it to Tamima. Anyways. Yeah, so now we really should go to the other, uh, the other Atlanta part. I think, which is, you know, really we spoke about a lot of fascinating things and maybe some things we didn't mention, but from one of the most... Fascinating things in the safe for, and we were just talking about uh, should you print it separately? But of course, people listening to this podcast should buy the safe for all the interesting things. Uh, there'll be a link in the show's notes to purchase it, and it's available in farm stores. But it, something called Karen Droimus Mizrafis, you put in a kun, or Kuntris Yam Bedarum, where you uh, let me actually say how you, you put in it's kind of three parts. The main part is this fascinating Gitin controversy that if you have learning Gitin, this is relevant and really a, a fascinating. Um, controversy, which a lot of Gittin controversies uh, happen. Again, one of our uh, mutual friends, Mr. Lee Bornstein, is, you know, he always tells me Gittin, Ebenezer is like, you want to see fascinating stories? Open Chuva safe on Ebenezer. You'll see like the most fascinating Chuvas. So this is kind of a, a really, uh, really interesting thing. And also, you also put in here a Kisser Tolus Rabban Atlanta. So, uh, you know, a short bio on the bottom of Atlanta, which is very interesting. 
Um, and then as well as some uh, sorted letters, mainly of Rav Tovia Geffen, again, the Coke rabbi. By the way, we keep, we've mentioned that a couple times. We should just say that was because he was the Rav Machshon Coca-Cola, and uh, purportedly, I mean, I think it's true, right? He was one of the few handful of people that knew the um, the recipe and the ingredient, the actual recipe for Coca-Cola. The ingredients, he had to know it to be the Rav Machshon. So it lacked the vault, but Rav Tovia Geffen knew it. Yeah, and... I made very little mention of the Coca-Cola only because it was very significant, but the man of the hundred years... And Coca Cola was like one episode in his 60 year rabbit in Atlantis. I just want to bring out that he was a person beyond that, but definitely it was a significant uh, facet of his career. So, so let, let's talk about the this country and also that you had help uh, from uh, Rabbi Moshe Berger, right? Does that mean he, he's, yeah. he's the one who uh, you actually just did a very nice piece of mishpacha about him and Rabbi Yudalevich? And Rabbi Yudalevich plays a big role in here. He's not, it's not, you know, it's not only, you know, surely again, we mentioned surely again, uh, Sholem Hornstein has his piece on the uh, Chalitza, the Shliach, the raid bite on that, go listen to it. But there also is uh, more to base, Shuvah's base of his Shuvah's and his son, Rabbi Yud, as he uh, shortened his name to, Americanized his name to, he's a big player. It's between him and Rabbi Geffen. So I'll, let, I'll give you the floor to talk about this really fascinating getting controversy that erupted in Atlanta. Yeah. So, so like I mentioned before, I wanted to include something to do with the city of Atlanta in the Sefer. And then I thought I'd also get something from Rabbi Geffen. Um, now, I thought I was going to get like one of these like Hadronim at the end of the Sefer, something that like it would be nice to have and just as like to grace the front of the Sefer, but wouldn't be something that would be that necessarily like more interesting. Um, so I, I went about trying to find things. I emailed, he has a grandson in Eretz Yisrael, someone named David Geffen, who was uh, very helpful in a number of ways for the Sefer. And he... Uh, I, he was sending me different things. Nothing really seemed to add up. It was like half pieces of shtuklach and there wasn't any Dover Shalom that I could really use. Um, meanwhile, I happened to be browsing a safer. I, I forgot when this happened, but I was I, in BMG. They were selling this, this Chuvas Atzei Basam, which is Rabbi Mendel Sen, Mendel Ravik, who is uh, who's, who is a Rav in Milwaukee. Um, he has a safer in the back. He has a Kuntras on on Gitten and the names of the cities of Gitten. Had to write them in, in Gitten. And in the back, he had like a little blurb for each city. I saw when it came to Atlanta, he had this. He had like two full paragraphs. So I read through it. And I saw that there was some sort of controversy. He referenced that there was this machlaikas. He mentions that Rabbi Yudalevich has a tshuva on it um, in the base av, um, which I looked up. But again, it was missing a little bit of context. And I kind of made nothing of it. Um, I was talking to a very close friend of my father's, um, someone named Yankel Grimblatt from Memphis. He's the son of Rabbi Nata. And I mentioned, did you happen to know this, who this Rabbi Yudalevich was? Um, because I, I had learned that Rabbi Yudalevich from New York had a son who was a rav in Atlanta, who had also recently discovered. And I was trying to figure out exactly who he was. Nothing to do with the Sefer. So he mentioned to me, he said, 40 years ago, I learned the Miri Shiva in Brooklyn. And there was a younger man there, or was a Bacher there, I'm a Bacher younger man. And he was obsessed with Rabbi Yudalevich. His name is Moshe Tzvi Berger. He said, if anyone knows anything about Yudalevich, he's the guy. So he gave me his number. And I called up Rabbi Berger. And I, I, I was on the phone with him for the next hour. And he just fascinated by this Rabbi Yudalevich, Yudalevich. And I said, there's some sort of controversy. I'm trying to piece it together because I saw Rabbi Sandra Roberts mentioned it. And the base office is a Chuva, and Rabbi Geffen has a letter. But I don't. I couldn't piece anything together. Meanwhile, David Geffen, like randomly, he would send me like random torrents of emails, but sometimes with useful information, sometimes not. And he sent me a letter one day, part of a letter, which was addressed to Rabbi Yud. I'm sorry, it was the opposite. He sent me a letter from Rabbi Yud, which is addressed to Rabbi Geffen. It had his letterhead from Atlanta, and it was about this very gifted controversy, which I was trying to find out about. So I emailed him back and said, "Where did you get this from?" He said, "I just found this piece of paper. I don't know where the rest of it is." And uh, I'm like, "Okay, we're like stuck in the middle of this mystery." So we, I, I think I sent that letter to, to Ali Zayas just to see if they could work, they could make it. I, I, I had never read Xavi out in my life before, and um, they started working on it. We we're missing a lot of words and like it was missing things. Then David Gaffin emails me and says, "Go check out the uh, AJHS American Jewish Historical Society of Manhattan. We donated everything from my grandfather to to that museum, and they have anything that would be of use." So I made an appointment. I went down there. I think it was still during like COVID or something, and I had to like wear a mask and body armor and stuff and. Um, I went in there and there was like 30 boxes of Rabbi Geffen stuff. They said, you can only take out five boxes. You're not, I, I said, but I just need to look for something. They said, you're not going to have time for more than five, six boxes. So I went, I went through like 10 boxes. I couldn't find it. I, I made another point. I went again and I knew that there was a folder that I was looking for. And after like an hour or so, I opened up this folder and like neatly stacked in this pile was about 10 letters of everything that I wanted. It was Rabbi Geffen and Rabbi Yud corresponding. And then a number of other chuvas. So we'll get to that. So let's jump in. So basically, we put together these letters. Um, Rabbi Berger went through most of them. We did it together. I would send it to him. Um, doesn't have an email or other easy modes of technology, but we managed to find people that could, you know, communicate between two of us. We're trying to get him on the podcast, Mr. Shem. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not a simple logistical uh, feat. Um, so let's talk about this. So 
most of the most of the story is contained from the letters, but there's a little bit of a historical backdrop as well, which is basically Rabbi Geffen came to Atlanta in about 1910, 1910, 1911. He grew up in Kovna and he learned uh, he learned in the early Sabbat Yeshiva and he had smicha from uh, I think Rabbi Rabinovich, who was the son of Rabbi Kohan Factor, and some other I think the Ridva, some other notable Rabbanim. Um, and he came. He he had like a few short gigs in other places in America. Came to Atlanta. Um, he became the rabbi of the shul called Sheret Israel, Sheret Yisrael. Sheret Israel had been a break off of a shul called AA, Abbas Achim. And this shul had been founded, I think, in the 1880s. And uh, as, as as the decades moved along, the early 1900s, they started becoming, I guess, what we'd call a little bit more modern. You know, the Rabbanim were starting to speak in English and their general uh, culture became a little more Americanized. So this group of uh, older Balabatim in, in, in AA broke off to start Sheret Israel to kind of maintain and uphold the customs and the minhagim and the lifestyle that they had, uh, you know, that they had been accustomed to. So there's already a little bit of a tension between the shuls, A being the more modern shul and, and Sheret Israel being the traditional shul. Um, shortly after Rabbi Geffen comes to town, the AA hires this Rabbi Yud. Rabbi Yud came from England. It's not so clear um, exactly what his background is. He's the son of his esteemed father, Bob and Aaron Yudlevich from New York. Um, he'd been in England. Um, he did learn in Valajan for a year. I found that either during or after printing the Sefer. Actually, I got a phone call from a guy in England who uh, put together a Sefer on the history of the Rabbanim in England. Um, he had seen this, and he had a little bit more information about Bayud after it printed. Um, but he um, he came and he had a doctorate, and uh, and he was speaking in English, and he was trying to impress his congregants. And Rabbi Geffen was an old, I mean, it wasn't old, but a, a old type European Jew who um, was trying to uphold. So meanwhile, someone comes to Bayud for a for a get, and he writes out a get. And in the get, the, the halacha is that you write the river that's closest to the city, that, that sustains the city, um, the water needs of the city. You include that in the name of the city on the get. Um, the Chattahoochee River at the time ran about seven miles north of the city. It was, I think by all standards, it was, it was outside of the perimeter of the city. And the custom had been from before they got there that they would not include the name of the Chattahoochee on the, on, on the Gitten. Rather, they would do what uh, what Allah says. You write Ame Mayanas, Ame Baris, which is basically um, reservoirs and, and other uh, means of water sources. Um, and Rabbi Yud, without consulting with Rabbi Geffen, and presumably without being aware of the precedent in the city, he wrote either the Yasfa Ame Chattahuchi, I think it's an Indian name, by the way, um, or he wrote Pitsad Chattahuchi, but either way, it wasn't in line with, with A, with the Minuk, and B, um, Rabbi Geffen f- thought that this was halakhically wrong. The Ramah, right, so it starts with the Beis Yosef, my limited knowledge of the Sugi, the Beis Yosef brings a machlekes between the Kolboi and uh, the Rashbar of Shimshon ben Avram, whether or not if you have a city where the river is outside the city, but the, but the city is still sustained by the water from the river, would that warrant including the river in the name of the city or not? So the Kolboi says it does, you could include it, and it's a kosher get, and the Rashba, who the Beis Yosef Haskins like, says you don't. And the Ramah Paskins in Shulchan Aruch, that you, you do not include it, and if you do, he, and he, he brings a Yesh Arim that if you, if you include the wrong name of the river, or the name of the wrong river, or the river mistakenly, so the Geddes Pasal field of the Evid. So Rabbi Geffen said, the Ramah says, Beferish, that the Geddes Pasal of the Evid, the city is well beyond, the, the river is well beyond the city. It's not a Kasher Get. Um, and uh, th- this began a very contentious debate between both Rabbi Geffen and Rabbi Yud. Rabbi Yud tried to defend himself by saying, first of all, that he had to say for Nachas Shiva. Uh, maybe Nachi knows who wrote the Nachas Shiva and when it was printed. You could give that to us or not. Um, we'll get to that. Um, and, and according to Nachla Shiva, Nachla Shiva has this whole arichas where basically he paskins like the Kolwe, not like the Ramah, and says that it's kosher. Regevin says, we have the Ramah, you don't need to come up to Nachla Shiva. So why are you getting involved? And, 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 and why are you making problems? He says, it's not a Bidyeva case. We could get another get. We have a present to the city. So if you make a new get, you're going to be much laws in the previous get into the city. So there's no reason for this whole ruckus. And Rabbi Yud continues to, to defend himself. Uh, very contentious debate. It's worth reading just for the uh, excitement of it. Uh, but another interesting svar that Rabbi Yud presents is that the um, the waterworks office, which is located by the river, has a local Atlanta area code for when you call it. So there's no long distance charge. So he says if there's no long distance charge, vice versa, it's still considered part of the city. And halakhically as well, you could consider this part of the city, Lagabi Giffen. And again, Rabbi, Rabbi Geffen refused this and says that this, this is matters of Ashes. This isn't um, this isn't the way we paskin. And um, I am shown the letters. I can't do justice to saying them over. But that's the that's the basic debate. But meanwhile. They both seek backup. So Rabbi mentions one of the letters that he's going to, um, he's going to try to seek opinions of other Rabbanim, and if he gets a few Rabbanim to agree with him, then he insists that Rabbi Yud uh, retract the get and issue a new get. 
So um, this is a lot of this is piecing things together, but um, there's a journal Yagel Torah, which was put out originally in Slutsk, and I think it, it eventually continued in New York. Um, and there's a letter that Rabbi Geffen writes to this journal, presenting the Shiloh, giving the case, and asking for Abanam to to present their uh, to present their shitas, their, their opinions. So the interesting thing is that this journal wasn't printed until several years later, which was a little bit confusing when we were going through the sugya because why would, you know, this took place in, in 1914. Why would Rebbe be writing in, I think it's 1918, 1919? Why is this appearing then? So we discovered then, I forgot whose discovery this was, I think Elmer Cohen actually, um, that the journal transplanted from Europe to America and for about five years it wasn't in print. So in all likelihood, Rebbe Geffen sent in this, this uh, submission in 1914, Bishas Meis, and then it only got printed several years later. And uh, at which time he got a bunch of tubas. So there's a lot, there's a bunch of letters um, that were in response. So one of the big rabbis in America at the time, Avram Gershon Lesser, was the chief rabbi of Cincinnati, one of the founders of the Godus Um He wrote a tuva. His tuvas are very interesting. At first, he says I'm very old and I can't, um, I, I can't really look into the sugya. But he writes a second letter and he says, I just received a copy of Arach HaShulchan. So apparently the Arach HaShulchan on Evan Ezer had just arrived I don't know exactly when it was printed, not that long before, but he had just gotten it in Cincinnati. And the Ark Shulchan actually says that you can follow what Rabbi Yud says, which is as long as the water is sustained by, as long as the city is sustained by the water, you can you can include that in the get. Um, that's his shoe. But then you have Rebel Margolis, who's famous for his butcher battles, amongst other things, but another one of the major Rabbanim in America. He um, he encourages Rabbi Geffen not to cave and, and to hold strong. And um, it seems that there was maybe a little bit of tension with all these Rabbanim and Rabbi Yud. Rishon Mochan Yafi also was a rabbi, I think, in St. Louis. He was the Rishon Wayu for a little bit. Um, he also writes a long tshuva supporting Rabbi Geffen. Um, so we printed all these letters. There's another, there's a rabbi in, in Kentucky, Usher Lipman Zarhi. Um, and that's all on Rabbi Geffen's side. And that's, I mean, these are tshuvas commissioned by Rabbi Geffen to support himself. Uh, meanwhile, there's a tshuva, like we mentioned before, there's a tshuva in the base Ab that Rabbi, Rabbi Yudalevich writes to his son supporting his son. It's interesting, if you go through the tshuva well, and I think we tried to highlight some of these parts, he does disagree in theory with what Rabbi Yud is saying, although there's another problem. I think there's a cherem of of time, which is challenging a get that's already written. That Rabbanu is supposed to respect a get once it's written, he shouldn't uh, be ma'ar on it. So he says, you know, he directs very strong words towards Rabbi Geffen for challenging his son's get. And he says in the future, he shouldn't continue to do this. In the future, just write, Amei Mayonot, Amei Baris. But he says that it's kosher for the Eved, and, and you should be saying on it. After printing this letter, after printing the whole Sefer, um, so we discovered that the letter that Rabbi Yud wrote to his father is actually printed in Rabbi Berger's recent edition of the Tshuva's Beis Av. So you could see his perspective, the way he's presenting the Shiloh. He doesn't add any real new details, but you got a perspective from him. It does seem like it was a mistaken assessment on his part. He didn't realize that there was a precedent, and he didn't realize that this had been passed on already, but he did definitely hold strong to his shita afterwards. Um, another thing I found in the, um, in the college in Cincinnati, Hebrew Union College Archives, um, I, I reached out to them because one of the previous Rabbanim in Atlanta, Yosef Mayer Levin, who had been the Rav in, in Rabbi Yud Shul prior to him, he, uh, they had, I called them up, I said, do you have his files? They said, we don't have any files, we just have a couple, get them from him, nothing of major interest. I said, but that's exactly what I want. So I said, please, could you say, you know, ask him for, for a scan of one of the Gitten? And um, the lady on the phone, she's a Tom Chacham too, I think, but she said, uh, she's a reform woman, she said, she said, it just looks like a regular get. I said, I know, I just do one line. And talk it was. So it says over there, Ame Mayana, Ame Bar. So this is from like 1906 or something, several years before this happened. We see that the president was established at least by 11, maybe before him. But um, that's something that was discovered afterwards. But um, basically, this entire debate is included, all the letters. Rabbi Berger insisted that I print also the Nachla Shiva, um, just so people could, uh, you know, could learn of the Sukkah, not just to read the Hak over here, but to actually go through it and see what he says. Um, so that's all included with some, you know, pictures of the letters also. It's cool to see the Atlanta letterhead on some of these letters. Um, that is the basic gist of this month like us. Yeah, so, so a lot of really, some fascinating stuff there. And like you're saying, you, you now, you, if we can, you know, we can talk about it. First of all, this is fascinating. It's almost, you know, almost it's worth the price of admission alone. But I, you know, I was telling you before, I think you should rework this, add more stuff, add a facsimile of that get, add more biography. There's a lot more you can add and reprint this as its own, uh, work. Um, later, perhaps. Uh, so first, we mentioned the Nachashev, the Talmud of the Taz. Uh, there's a beautiful new three-volume edition. Uh, it's actually the third Madura of it. Shmuel Levi Segel, he was a Rav in Ashkenaz, he was in Ashkenaz, Poland, and I believe he was Nifter Ashkenaz in uh, Germany. Uh, so it's a very important Sefer Shnaris, it's Chuvis. Yeah, so it's very, you know, you can get it the three volumes uh, now. 
the new edition. Um, but but like you know, first of all, what you did before each one, as I like to call it on the podcast, a number of times, the art scroll gray box you have in the in front of each letter, giving the basic bio of each one of these rabbanim. I mean, you have a nice overview at the beginning of this uh, kuntras in the back. You have a nice that uh, that you put together for a burger. You have a nice uh, kind of overview of the whole sugya. But some of this stuff is just uh, amazing to read. The sharf guide between the two rabbanim. Uh, back and forth you know that's also yeah. some old time uh yeah y- you know if you write to me again i'm gonna burn it before you before i read it so don't even bother um, right, even you talked about the beginning you know classic you know forgive me for writing these things to you because i do you know you know what chazal say but if there's a chil hashem you don't give covered you don't give honor to the rav i'm trying to give uh you know to the Kavanah Torah, then he writes back. So then Rabbi Yud writes back to him. He says, "Larry, you know, you said you didn't see Nachal Shiva. You know, some of those letters are missing. But you can parse it out. Larry, you know, in a raya, just because you didn't see it, Nachal Shiva is not a raya to anything. The Imla Brak Lamana Emes he died, but you want to see the truth. Halei Beisi Loi Me Eivli Yamhu, which is great, a great pun. My 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 house is not Me Eivli Yam, but I say for Nachal Shiva Yesh Piyadi. I have the Nachal Shiva at home. The Imla Chavsi Ladas Hadin Loi Le Ful Puli Ba Alma Achla Lacha. You don't want to just am hacker, right? You want to know the halacha." Let me know what time you want to come over. I'm looking forward, and we'll talk about it, Mr. Shem. He writes, and he writes this to me, and they're like writing letters across the city. I don't know, you, you know Atlanta more than I, we, how, they could have been that far from each other. Where, yeah, but so, but yeah. then, he, then he writes him, then, then he finishes off the short letter. I'm very busy. There's people sitting in front of me right now. Have a nice day. I gotta, I gotta move on over here. Yeah. He, write, he writes back. Yeah, the other thing, Regeffen writes, he says, This morning I was so troubled last night by what you told me. He said, Right after I ate breakfast, I got into the car. I'm told that means the street car, not a regular car. And he, I went to the river to see how far it is. And he says, It's still seven miles away and it's not, it's not near here. Um, that definitely doesn't deserve mention. Um, yeah. And, and, and then, yeah, and they go through, you know, like you said, this is the old time. Masha Hevi Huraya, your office shall have water company, the water company, on the other side uh, from pronouncing that wrong, Kasher Nichta, Kasher Nichta, and Miss Sapri, a telephone company, with Ovid Mashaikas, who is in. He's going on, I told him, but they're busy fighting about the water company. And, and, and like you're saying, um, um, it's, it's, you know, then, then Rabbi Yud writes back to him, by the way, later on. So that, that first letter, the one I quoted Rabbi Yud writing, was Yoim Bez, um, was the, was Yoim Bez, he just said, instead of a Tzedek Tishpanam Yisecha. And then he writes back to him, Yoim Dal, he says, Avol Vamishpat, Shnasa De Reisam. Yeah, he has right? some cute, uh, so coupons, they said there's some cute uh what do we call it? Um um he says uh he says I need a key seal of color yam espo for gamma yam. I waited for you the whole day yesterday and today. Ulay boy, you have a basic, maybe come to my house. Kashu be kashtiv and mechtavi, like I asked you, Lyris is a din lamana emes fatzedic. To see the truth. Achlipa you didn't come. Ukanira came because the claw the claw does and lacha. You don't care to know that lacha. Achla hot says Aisha Machalik, you just want to make fights. Lachana Matila deal is a din as a don din emes lamita, one who Says the the true din kibble kibble am veeda begam lefarit befrutrut kol ashkogis arabes vagdolis avoltus mitvara v'shichtem at kinov v'sinas chinam. It's right. You can tell there was a real fight going on in the same city, like you said. And there, Rabbi, Rabbi Geffen has a lot of chuvas in here that he writes to a lot. You know, he's writing about you know. I don't want to only portray one side. And Rabbi yeah, Geffen is yeah, very yeah. real sharp writer. It's real old time. You see, it's a real geschmack even when not even the longest. You're just reading this these letters and you're like uh, you know you get a good uh, yeah. We even had, even Rabbi Yudalevich's letter in his tshuva. There's a line I think it might have been highlighted. Um, he says about the Geffen Baikig Bayer Asher Leira Iris Miyamov. You know, um, just complaining about this Rabbi Geffen. Lo yada midivri a pais kem uma yachos on hafshay shu milka ben sudas hachamim zechan racha. And the sharp came around in the family. Rabbi Yudalevich, I think Kayadua was very sharp in his letters, and uh, his son definitely uh, 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 had that as well. Yeah. Um, I just want to pull out something from one of Rabbi Geffen's letters, and he's writing to Rabbi Lesser, um, who, who, as you mentioned, um, was, uh, Sir Rabbi Lesser, he writes to him, Zeh Adav Rabbeinu Atlanta, Mesad Jeven Oisim Gitten Zeh Yosem Esrim Shot Me'asar Hashem more than 10 years. Kegain Gam Oni Ba'atzmi Sadati Poi. He says, I, I also put together many Gitten, Asher Shalach Yosem Oisem Lomdinus, Russia, for Ostreich, Be'eza Orem Poi, in many cities there. Ubarach Hashem niskablu berots and itzra abanim shalachti shama. They were Baruch Hashem. They were accepted. They they were very happy with these gittin. But gam har abanim akoyd mimli asher hayu poy gam ki in charge of an aser harbe gittin. Their abanim before me gave many gittin. By minik poy lichtu di asal me me asal me baris. Halo lichtu shemar. 
like you said, you write it, uh, you know, because of the 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 buyers, you know, the local whatever is here, not. Of the, of the river, Anglit. He writes it out. Do a river, seven miles, English miles, English miles, meaning American, you know, miles. It's not, it's not here. And he goes through. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, you know, really interesting back and forth. It's a, a fascinating thing to read. Yeah, uh, just an interesting speculation about the whole thing is that um, <laughs> part of me wants to say that the reason that Rabbi Geffen was so hesitant to include Chad Huchi and the Get. Is just the difficulty of coming, uh, figuring out how to spell it, um, which would have been a, a tremendous challenge in its own right. So definitely an easy way out is to, um, again, Hashem. Obviously, there was a, a major sugi here, but uh, that's an interesting thing as well. If you want to jump ahead to just the, meaning the, the question of contemporary Gittin in Atlanta, which is today, obviously the city is much bigger, and um, it seems that the city basically pushed up against the river. Um, so the question is, so I, I asked a number of the people that deal with the Gittin today, you just want to go at the letters? Now keep going, keep going. Uh, yeah, a number of the people. So there's, so I called him Emmanuel Feldman, who uh, he, for several decades, was doing the Gittin himself. Um, so he told me that back in the 70s, somebody confronted him and said, you know, that we're, we're on the river now. You got you to change the Gittin. So he called up, he said he called his father, who was the person that Rav Ruderman relied on for Gittin. And his father told him that you keep doing the way you were because, again, you're going to be Ma'ar on the Get, on the on previous Gittin. And uh, that's a, a Shmuel Kashkaran, who's the Rav there today, the Sephardi Rav, who does the Gittin. He said that that's what he heard from Rav Nata Greenblatt. Um, Rav Sandra Ravik also said that. Um, so the, the consensus is that these things don't change, despite the fact that um, the river definitely is close enough to the city to be counted as part of the city at this point. Yeah, and just to uh, Rav Shalom al Khanan Yafi wrote a letter to Rav Gifan, and he says, They bring it with the pipes. Doesn't mean it brings it. If they bring it, they bring it, and you take it, and you you know you put in buckets, and you bring it on the horse, you put it on the train. Are you going to bring the water from wherever? Are you going to have to write in a get? You know, I don't we're not really going through this. You're just putting out like the sharp guys. Also, it's also interesting to see this is like the technology going on. They have the phone, the water company, yeah. long distance calls. They're putting on the train. It's a, it's very interesting to read like this kind of early American fight. And did you see what year this was? At this 1914. Yeah, so real, uh, real early uh, 20th century. And, and again, it's a, re- it's a really fascinating parsha. Well worth um, checking out. So, um, and then a, there is a facsimile of one letter of Rabbi Geffen and one letter of Rabbi Yu that you can see their handwriting. And then, uh, and then you included the uh, history, the, the short bio with pictures yeah, of I, the of them, of the Matsevis, of newspapers, of the Rabbanim of Atlanta. Yeah, I just want to add one thing, just because it's a cute line. Um, I was trying to figure out. I want to put a separate contrast in the back of the safer about the Gittin in Atlanta. So I was trying to think of what what kind of name could capture this. Um, so I was asking Shmuel Shayafi again. You know, he said, what's the Shiloh? So I said, it's a, it's a get in Atlanta um, about the river. So he thinks for a minute and he says, Yam Bidarm Girasha. The plan, the Pasuk of Yam Bidarm Girasha. So we shortened it, it's just called Yam Bidarm. And the entire section is called uh, Karen Dermis Mizrachis. And right, like you mentioned, so we went through the Rabbanim in Atlanta in the back, the Zikni Darm. Um, I just think it's important to know, like there was, there's like this, I mean, as someone that comes from the city, like we have a tremendous history. Um, a number of Chasher Rabbanim there, um, who 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 went through the city? Um, a number of Sabbat alumni as well, which could get uh, Davi and Yehuda excited. They could do an article about that. Um, you know, uh, some of the names became famous. Rebbechanasi Guterman was the was a famous rabbi in Scranton for like 50, 60 years. Um, Rabbi Geffen obviously is famous, and Rabbi um, <clears throat> Mayor Levin. I think he had a famous brother in Minneapolis, and he was in he was in Atlanta for a little bit. Um, a lot of them put out Svarm, Chash Vesarm. Uh, one of them had a Hespid. Oh, Rabbi Levin has a safer with a Hespid on the, uh, on, the, on the victims of the Titanic and on Herzl. Someone just came over me and showed a few days ago and was upset that I mentioned that. But uh, he mentioned it because it's in a safer. Um, so that's the, that's the section in the back. Oh, and, and after the biographies of the Rabbanim, we also have just a number of assorted letters that came mostly from the archive of Rabbi Geffen. Um, things which were uniquely interesting, um, just correspondence with different Rabbanim. Um, notably, his correspondence, his brother-in-law was Rav Chaim Telzer, uh, their Shiva and Tells in Lita. Um, so he has a bunch of letters from him about the yeshiva, fundraising for the yeshiva, and also from his son, Rabbanzeril Rabinowitz, who was, um, who was killed uh, in the war. And there's very little bit in writing from him. It's not terror letters, but it is, um, you know, about the family and different things about the yeshiva. Um, might be the only thing in print from him 
So it's nice that that's included as well um, in the safer. Okay. So yeah. I yeah, there's there's really uh, I'm sure there's more to talk about that we did not uh, get to, but it's a really fascinating uh, safer with a lot of really interesting you know Debre Torah manuscripts. This this given controversy, I, you know, when I remember reading it, is really interesting to go to look at and to go through. Um, and there's you know there's there's a lot there's a lot in here. Like I said, it's 600 pages, a big safer. So uh, um, I think it's already second printing, right? I don't know how many more printings there's going to be. So if you want a copy, yeah. you should. I'll put a link in the show's notes. Mizrahi has them. I don't know, has an edit. Farm Source edit. It's available, right? Yeah, it's mostly by Mizrahi now. Um, I just want to add a few things. So just uh, yeah, Bark, so we did a second printing. Just you know, I was out of copies. Um, I didn't print a ton the first time. Just some basic corrections in the second one, but not so significant. Um, I just remember, uh, just the Sefer in general, again, it doesn't cover a specific topic. There's lots of things, and I think there's something for everybody. There's halacha, machshava, lambdas, um, history. Um, I, I called a certain Rosh Hashiva. I was trying to get a shtickle from him for the Sefer. And he asked me what I'm doing. I said, it's a Sefer Zikar. And he started telling me, he said, you know, Sefer Zikar really have no purpose because you can't use it for anything. And like every sugi you learn. And I said, I hear you. I said, but, you know, this is the only way I can do it. But I happen to humbly disagree. Like, I think, first, it's an excellent national safer. Um, I know Ben's Manims and Shul, people bring the Shul and um, people enjoy reading it. And so there's like, there's really something for everybody in there. Um, I met a few, you know, since, you know, at Bar a lot of positive feedback from the safer. Um, people didn't expect the safer to come out like this, and myself included. Um, but if, just a few different things I mentioned. I, I saw C. Berkowitz from Nari Stahl, Rebbe, my father, at, at a chasana a few months ago. And I, I asked him if he saw the safer yet. And he looked at me and he said, I read the safer, Mitchilasai Vat Saifai. Um, which was nice to hear. And um, yeah, something which is, which is very special for me to hear, Nachum Lansky, I mentioned before, again, America's Hidden Treasure. I brought him a copy of the Safer, and in a way that only Nachum could say, he looked me in the eye and he said, your father deserves this. And uh, to me, I think, made the entire project worth it. Uh, Baruch Hashem. And uh, I hope it should be it should be a schus and, and a cover to my father. And um, I hope people learn it, people enjoy it. And I, I'm welcome. I welcome any horrors and feedback and ideas for other projects. Um, definitely enjoyed working on this. And um, yeah, thank you very much, Nachi, for hosting this. So I will. Uh, I'll, I'll link uh, to to the safer, and I'll also link your email. I'll link. I'll put your email if you want to uh, people any horrors. And I, I want to mention, like you said, it should be a zecher. The lishmas of your father, Ramesh Ezra, Ramesh Yitzchak Ezra. And his uh, yard site is uh, soon Chai Menachem Av, so this is Yud Yud Chasav. Chai Av. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And this should be Aschos uh, Fizn Shama. And uh, thank you for joining me once again on the podcast. Now that uh, again, once again, because you were on anonymously once, but uh, thank you again. It should be Zeknesh Masa Ilan Shama Thank you, Nachi. Thank you.